know that there's some people out there that have issue with wild and free. I don't think it's like the ideas or the concepts in wild and free because those are pretty universal for pretty much everyone around this world. I just kind of wanted to dive in to why I think the author wrote this book and some of the takeaways that I got out of it. And so however you feel about Wild and Free, I do recommend that you read this book because maybe you don't wanna be part of the group like we did, <laughs> but maybe you kind of align with the ideas that the movement you know, put forth. So this book is all about creating meaningful connections with your kids and like who does not wanna do that? It's embracing their unique qualities, not forcing them into a mold that you think they should belong in. And it's fostering a love of learning through exploration of interests. And you can probably hear the gardener, not our gardener, but the neighbor's gardener out there. So I'm gonna go close the door real quick. All right, so the first key takeaway from a wild and free family is that the relationship that you have with your kids is more important than homeschooling. It's more important than the curriculum it's more important than the schedule. It's more important than the plan. It's just your relationship is more important than any of that. And Ainsley, the author, she emphasizes that your relationship will help foster a better learning outcome for your kids. Because by investing your time and energy into that relationship, your child will feel loved and supported and like they can express themselves. And so that when you create that environment, then learning blossoms, then it's a safe place to learn. And so relationships, remember that relationships are more important than the curriculum. Next, the author talks about how important it is to understand your child, that understand their uniqueness. Like they are an individual. They, yes, they came from you, but they are not you. They are a unique little creature and you need to let them be who they are. And it's essential to understand, you know, our child's uniqueness, what their needs are, what their um, interests are, their learning styles, to recognize their strengths and their weaknesses. And from that, you can tailor your homeschool to meet their needs because that's why we chose to homeschool, right? So that we can provide a tailor-made education for our kids. And, we, and when we tailor our approach to education, then they're gonna feel more confident about their abilities and more confident in um, meeting any challenges that they may have. So the next key takeaway for me is creating a safe space. And I'm not talking about just like a safe physical space, but a safe emotional space. So a space where your child feels safe to be who they are, where they know they're not gonna be criticized for their interests or for their, um, taste in music or the type of books they like to read, etc. How many people here would like it if someone came up to them and told them that they were reading twaddle? <laughs> I wouldn't like that, right? So don't tell your kids that they're reading twaddle. Let them read what they want to read. As long as they're reading, I mean, that's good. That's good, right? We want them to learn how to read. We want them to enjoy reading. And when your kids feel emotionally secure, they're more likely to take risks. They're more likely to um, be up for challenges. They're more likely to learn from their mistakes. And having this safe space encourages them to be inquisitive and curious and creative, which is going to essentially foster their lifelong love of learning, right? That's what we want. And then another key takeaway is encouraging wonder. It's teaching your kids how to ask meaningful questions, how to be curious about the world, not to be shut, you know, not to shut down when someone has like a, a different opinion or a different take on, on the world. It's to be open to that, to be curious, to engage with the world. So this can be achieved by providing opportunities to explore, to ask questions, encourages creative thinking. It also encourages critical thinking and problem solving skills. So, you know, encouraging wonder, let your kids explore their interests, let them do learn about things that they want to learn, not just what is in the curriculum, not just what um, someone told you that you should be doing with your kids, you know, follow their interests. And I think one of the most powerful lessons from Wild and Free Family is allowing your child to explore their passion. You know, by giving them the space and the resources to pursue their passions, is, is just gonna unlock their full potential. And it not only helps them develop a strong sense of self, 
but it also helped him foster a deep love of learning, which is what we want, essentially, is for our kids to be lifelong learners, to love learning, to enjoy being homeschooled. So Ainsley, the author, also encourages you to go on adventures, like to explore the world around you. Like, you don't need to be homeschooling just at home. You can be somewhere else in homeschooling. You can be uh, doing something else and it's considered homeschooling. So going on adventures with your kids, whether they're big or whether they're small, just creates lasting memories that your kids will always think back and when they think about homeschooling. They'll think about the field trips that you guys went on. They'll think about the activities that you guys did. Not so much about the theme that you learned when you read whatever book that you read. And on top of that, you're creating a love of the outdoors, a love of nature, a love of the world around us, all, all the uniqueness and all the different aspects of it. And a love for history because you can easily go outside your house, go explore your little town or your city and learn so much history about that area. And by participating in these kind of adventures, we're teaching your kids that learning can be fun and exciting, that it doesn't have to be out of a textbook and that there's the world is just full of things to explore and hopefully they will leave their hometown and go explore that world. And then the seventh takeaway is that you can't forget that your kids are going to grow up. They are not going to stay with you forever. They're going to grow up. They're going to become teenagers. They're going to leave the house. You have no control over them when they leave the house. So you need to be ready to let go. So our goal is to raise children who are prepared to face the world that we live in and to be able to make a difference in their own unique way. So I think by implementing these key takeaways from Wild and Free Family, we can create a homeschool that is supportive, that is loving, that is full of wonder, that has time for exploration, and our children can feel supported and encouraged and empowered. So if you haven't picked up your copy, be sure to get one. I have a link down below. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, ciao.